Good everyone, BH and Dad here. Today we're looking to this Microsoft Service Pro 7. Now this is the seventh generation of this particular product, so it's a very well refined product itself and you definitely feel it when you actually touch and feel of it. So we'll go through some of the major changes they made for the Service Pro 7 compared to the 6. There's only a few, but the first off we'll see is of course the annual update to the processor so it's gone to the 10th generation intel processor there so what's interesting is enough is they actually brought in a budget model so that actually is an intel i3 now that's dual core and you can actually get it with four gigs of ram and 128 gigs of ssd hard drive there so that's their base model there enough that it's pretty much the same as the previous model so you can actually go for i5 which is four cores and i7 which is again four cores and then you can configure all the way up to 16 gigs of RAM and again one terabyte of SSD for those two configurations there. So the Service Pro 7 comes in two colors, black which I have right here and plan which is close to a silver in color there. Now the Service Pro 7 display is a 12.3 inch display. Now it is no different to the previous model there so this resolution is the same as well. So the resolution is just a little bit above 2K display there. Now it is rated at 400 nits of brightness and I did the testing, a more in-depth video about the color and color calibration of this display in a, another video there. Now, if you haven't seen that video, I'll put a link in the description below if you want to check that out. I'll also give you a color profile to help you get a little bit better color accuracy of this display there for photography and videography there. Let's have a look at the ports. Now, on the right hand side, we've got a USB-C. Now, this is a new port they've added to the Surface Pro 7. The Surface Pro 6 did not have this port. And just remember, this is not a Thunderbolt port. It's just a USB-C. And this, then we have a USB 3.1 Gen 1 port. And then we have the Surface Connect port as well. So this is for you to connect your power and also the Surface dock as well. Now looking on the left hand side, we've just got the headphone jack and that's pretty much clean of anything else. Looking at the top of the computer, we have the power key and also the volume buttons as well. Underneath the kickstand is still the micro SD card reader, which is fantastic. So you can actually expand the memory on the Surface Pro 7. The webcam is a 1080p webcam, which is great to hear. And also is a five megapixel camera as well. Now the well-facing camera itself is an eight megapixel camera and it can do 1080p as well, which is great too to do videos if you need to do those quick bursts of videos there. So the keyboard and the type cover, which more than likely you will purchase with this Surface Pro 7, is no different to the previous model there. It's actually quite nice there. It's got a bit of, fair bit of keyboard travel enough to actually feel it. It's actually quite one of the nice keyboards I like from the type covers from a lot of other ones there. The type cover is backlit as well for the keys and there are four settings to the backlight. So there is off, low, medium and high. As for the trackpad, it's got a bit of a glass based sort of feel to the actual trackpad as well and it is quite nice there and I think they made it a little tad bigger. I haven't really measured it but I feel it feels a little bit more bigger there than the previous model there. The trackpad on the type cover does understand Windows gestures. I think it's up to four fingers that I know of. So you can actually perform the Windows gestures, as you can see, and a four fingers up will get you to the task view, as you can see. Now I have created a bit more in-depth video I had about the Windows gestures. If you want to learn more about that, I'll put a link in the description below for you. Now as for the magnet for the type cover keyboard, it hasn't really been changed. It's actually still quite the bit of the same. Uh, I was hoping they would upgrade a little bit more for the second hinge here, but I did make my complaints to Microsoft and they said it was actually, they, they did test it. And like I said, I'm off the cover at the moment and it does do pretty well there to keep itself there. So I don't think you have as much problem as the previous model there, especially the new kickstand they've actually added in, which is actually about the hinge itself. So let's get it onto that, but the hinge. So the hinge itself is actually one of the new things that they've actually done to the Surface Pro 7 and they've actually improved and I was talking to the Microsoft person about this one they've actually made it more stronger and it has a bit of different pressure sensitivity when you actually close it and and then make it easier to actually lift it up and then there's another sensitive to actually move it across between the different angles there. So it's actually quite nice. And also they made it more serviceable, which is a little bit easier to repair as well too. So that's a new design of the hinge there itself. So there are two speakers on each side of the Surface Pro 7. Now when I booted up the sound of it, the sound quality was not too much difference from the Surface Pro 6. It still has a very nice stereo sort of feel to it. And now I have actually seen this speakers from and the sound from the Surface Pro X and I have done a review of that and that 
one that sounds a lot better so I can't wait until they bring those speakers into the Surface Pro range for the next one there. Now as for the actually volume of the Surface Pro 7 speakers when I tested that it went to a maximum of 80.2 decibels so that's not too bad there at all. Now this particular model I have is the i7 version there and when I tested out the battery you're pretty much on normal average use and the brightness is set to around about 150. You're looking around about just hitting about eight hours there. And as for low and you put in performance mode, you're pretty much, you're getting around about two and a half hours there for the battery life of the Surface Pro 7 there. So the weight of the Surface Pro 7, just the unit itself is 791 grams. So the Surface Pro 7 with the type cover, you're looking at 1.097 kilos. So I've been stress testing the CPU for the last two and a half hours and pretty much the CPU is probably seeing around about 1.1 to about 1.4 gigahertz and it is struggling to pretty much keep a unionization 100%. It just keeps going so which means it's been thermal throttle a fair bit at the moment to try and keep itself cooled down. And as for how loud the fan gets, let's have a look. I've got a decibel meter running at the moment. You're looking at about 32 decibels. So while the computer is at the moment being stress test, I'm going to tell you about the temperatures here. So I can definitely feel here at the bottom here is actually quite hot as well. And at the top here is definitely hot as well too. The most hottest part is definitely underneath the well facing camera. That is definitely probably most likely where the actual processor is sitting there and it is quite toasty there. I can definitely feel so that so but you wouldn't normally be running this sort of thing and holding this and this sort of fact and you do need to have your power um, connected for it to actually run at 100% unionization as well too. So measuring the back you're looking at 43.1 degrees Celsius and my ambient temperature is 24 degrees Celsius. Measuring the front of the glass while it's been stress test you're looking at 41.3 degrees Celsius. As for accessory wise, Microsoft did not bring out a new service pen. It's still using the previous model there. So if you've actually got an uh, old service pen, you can actually reuse it for the Service Pro 7 there. And as for the dock, again, they didn't bring out a new dock, which I hope they was going to do, but they're still using the same old dock there, which is a service dock there. And again, it uses the service connect port there. Now this will do quick charge to the Service Pro 7, and which is pretty much can do eight, 30% of the battery in one hour's time and then it takes up just under two hours to charge it to 100% there after it hits that one hour there. Because the Service Pro 7 has a new USB-C port, you can actually use a USB-C dock. Now make sure it's not a Thunderbolt dock because that's not a Thunderbolt port there. If you connect the Thunderbolt port to this Service Pro 7, it will only half the interfaces will work and pretty much it's just the USB really that actually works. Um, I have tested it out with a Thunderbolt dock and pretty much you won't get any displays. You get actual network but and you get USBs, but that's pretty much all you get from it. So you've got to find a non-Thunderbolt dock. Now this one I've got here in my hands is the WD-19 dock. Now I've actually done a review on that one as well too. Now I've tested out the WD-19 dock with the Service Pro 7, I was able to get dual external screens there. I was unable to get triple external screens, but you can get dual external screens plus the inbuilt display, so that's really technically free displays. For those that's interested in the performance of this computer, I have done the benchmarks on them. So I'll put up on the screen, which is the 3D mark, also the PC mark, and the pass mark. They're all marks, aren't they? And also Citibench R15, and R20 there for you to have a look at. And also I did the test for the sound guys, which is a latency mon test, and I pretty much did the free tests for them. The Service Pro 7 is connected to the Service Dock, and then Pro 7 was connected by the USB-C dock, and also when Service Pro 7 is running on battery as well. 
And as for the feel of this computer here, you definitely would not be disappointed with this. Microsoft will definitely continue building this as a very premium product there. So definitely a nice feel of the metal there. And the edges don't really feel that cutting neither or sharp neither. So it's got a very nice um, rounded edges there. I do have to say that the Surface Pro X1, I really do like that one. It has a very nice sort of curvature there. And I can't wait when they bring that over to the Surface Pro 8, which is probably later this year, I have a feeling, or next year. But definitely I do, this one here, you won't be disappointed by the build quality. It has a very nice feel to it, and it is a premium product there. As for the screen wise, you definitely feel the actual, um, it is a fingerprint grab, unfortunately, but you just bring a cloth with you if you ever get really annoyed by that there. So the Surface Pro 7 is quite nice of a computer here. Now, because I've actually played with the Surface Pro X, this is probably the service that you'll be getting. Just quite simply, you can actually install a lot of software there, which you can't do with the Surface Pro X. And so this is still a really beautiful product here, and I definitely still couldn't recommend this. If, if you're doing coming from a Surface Pro 6, I probably will be holding off a little bit for that, but for all of the previous models there, definitely this is a great product to move up to. It is a little bit pity about the thermal throttling on the CPU here, which is unfortunately this is the i7 version, so maybe our i5 version won't get as bad for the thermal throttling. But if you enjoyed this video or find me informants, give it a like. And if you haven't done already, subscribe to my channel by hitting the subscribe button on the bottom of the screen. I do try to upload a new video every Tuesday. And just remember, imperfections in life makes it beautiful and interesting. I'll see you next video.